another present to myself. We move out your way. We're back. We're back again for another unboxing. And as you can tell, it is not, it is not a load of wagons, because obviously the box will be a lot bigger. This is a loco. Um, it's a pre-order loco, so I've been waiting for this loco now for three, four, five months. I can't actually even remember, to be honest with you, but I did order it with several other locos. Obviously, they haven't been made yet, but this is the first one. Um, and this, this here is batch number two. So, and it's from Acura Scale. But before I show you, I just want to say a massive thank you to everyone who has liked and subscribed and who has viewed the videos. And if you've left a comment, obviously I'll get back to you very soon. We're now, we're now above 800 subscribers. So I just want to say thank you for everyone who's joined me on this journey, who's tuned in to watch all the little shorts and the videos as well. So a massive thank you to everybody. And secondly, it wouldn't be the same. We'll have a good cup of tea. So cheers. Let's get to it. Right, safety, safety first, safety first, right. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to, let's make sure it's the right way, no it's not, to batch two of the Acuriscale Class 37s. And what, and what we have here, so this, this didn't actually come from Acuriscale, because when you get them from Acuriscale, they come with the lovely, lovely little cardboard, um, cardboard protectors for the ends, and it does say Acura scale from it, so, but I shall tell you who I got this from very, very soon. But this particular loco is obviously a lock sound V5, and this is the debranded or unbranded DRS 37. So, let's have a look. I've seen this, and I, I it, it, oh, this looks incredible, it really does. Obviously, the suspense is killing me. Come on. Voila. So, obviously the usual amazing quality boxes and obviously the thick foam. Now, we do have obviously the usual, the usual, the usual, these are the numbers, obviously for the sound decoder, obviously it goes up to 29, but there is 26 that doesn't use, uh, get used. There you go, but I shall go into more detail later. Obviously we have this incredible manual, not for the model, just to clarify, but for the 37 in general. Look at the coffee stains, how cool does that look? That, or could be tea stains, tea stains, that's what I think. Obviously, we have that, and I'll go into that very soon. But this, 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 ah, oh, this is, this is lovely. I hate to say it, but about a month ago, I was really debating on whether I should cancel it. Because I didn't want to just buy a loco just for the sake of buying a loco and it not fitting in my train plan very well. So, but looking at it, it fits perfectly. There we go. How beautiful does that look? So you don't want to see it in my hand. We're going to go through the paperwork first. So here we go. Where to start? We shall start with these. You must read the instructions on the reverse of this card before operating your model. This here is if you wish to run a non-ESU decoder or the blanking plate or with an ESU decoder, obviously. So these are the switches. They're the switches, obviously, how you need to have them, etc., etc. 
Obviously, if it comes with sound already, it does come set up already. So there's that one. And obviously then you have these. So obviously have a read. So if you do, have a read of them. Next is this one. So this is the uh, basically the breakdown. So obviously unpackaging, safe operation, intended use, etc., etc. Wheel cleaning and then checking the electrical continuity or connectivity. Um, so that's 37419. Um, if I'm not mistaken, please correct me, but didn't, I'm sure they've done this one already because I think my brother's got this one, uh, Intercity livery and i'm sure it's that number if it's not obviously just correct me so i'm sure my brother will correct me obviously inside we have a beautifully broken down diagram of every part going so there you go look all the way to the cogs and everything quite incredible really so if you do need any need any parts obviously you can find out what number it is and obviously go from there as well so here and also, by the looks of this, this just has a few lugs on the shell. So there's no screws in it or anything like that. Just a few lugs on the shell that hold it to the chassis. So that's really good. But also, the top, so obviously this, this comes off as well, which is really handy. So if you do need to change the decoder, I don't think you can take the speaker out. I'm not too sure where the speaker sits. Where does the speaker sit? Where does it... <laughs> No, no, nope, can't find it. But anyway, yeah, so the speaker was sitting there, but I think it would be predominantly to take the decoder out. So, but I shall find out in a minute. So, obviously, you have that as well. So, this is obviously all the air pipes, etc., etc., um, for the loco. And obviously, uh, as electric train heating, I think, as well. So, and obviously, all various other instructions. If you want to fit drivers to your loco, as well right there's that moving on to the next one we have this is obviously for the sound locos so Acura scale 37 locomotive obviously the, all the functions we have all the functions there you go all the way down there we also have drivers desk light on or off so I'm not too sure I'm not too sure I haven't actually seen it yet um, if this has the dials that light up, I think it does, but I shall find out very soon. Obviously, there's the back of it. So cab light on or off, etc. etc. You've got night lights on or off, depot lights on or off, etc. There we go. And now look at this. Look how nice does this look, eh? It looks old. Um, you got the, the old staples there as well. Obviously, you got the the holes, the whole page, they're not actual holes, just to clarify. This is obviously for the class 37. So, quick rundown, look at all the little notes. How good does that look, eh? There we go. So there you've got the history. Oh wow, look at that. We have the history of the 37, and then you have the various liveries, various liveries that they have, they have done or doing. There we go. There's the Harry Needle. Oh, no, Mr. Page. There we go. Regional Railways, Direct Rail Service, Dutch Livery. Uh, metals Livery, is that? Or oh, no, yeah, Metals Livery. Large logo, and then just the BR Blue. There we go. So there's mine. Oh, no, it's not. That's not mine, actually. That's a lie. That's not. That is, oh, it's actually 307266. That one is. And then you've got the... Uh, the rail operations group with the phoenix on the side now i wonder wonder if they are going to do 37 is it 901 the one with the mirrors engine in it i know they've done it with the phoenix uh, logo on the side but i was wondering if they're going to do it in the older liveries because that could be a possibility for a small buy so there you go obviously that as well and then obviously more more notes or it's a maintenance record our maintenance log there you go and look at that, I love it, absolutely love it. So obviously now you wanna see the loco. Now a brief history of the 37s and this particular loco as well. The type three diesel electric locomotives were built between 1960 and 1965 at the English Electric's Vulcan foundry and with around 300 examples produced in total. This particular loco was built in the English Electric Vulcan foundry work 
all the way back in 1965, 13th of February. The numbering of the loco was pre-tops and was assigned D6966. Around 1974, this loco became 37266 under the tops numbering. Throughout its life, it has worn many different outfits, from BR Green to regional railways to the striking maroon gold livery of EWS. In 1986, this was one of 31 Class 37s to be put forward to be overhauled and to be fitted with ETH, electric train heating to be used on passenger trains. This happened in January 1986, and 37276 was renumbered into what we know it as now, 37. Four, two, two. In 1993, the 37 gained another livery, this livery being the regional railways. Fast forward to 1999 and the loco was placed into store after years of different passenger services around the country. Four years later, it was brought back out and named Cardiff Canton in February 2003 and only used as a backup engine, but this time it was in the beautiful gold and maroon livery of EWS. Fast forward again, this time to September 2008, when EWS placed the loco back into storage. Three years later, new hope was on the horizon in the form of DRS. They brought the loco and had a complete overhaul. This was done at Barry Hill by the Harry Needle Company. And in 2015, it was back working passenger trains, but this time in East Anglia, but without the nameplate of Cardiff Canton. The colour that you see on the loco to this day is the beautiful Oxford blue and it was actually the staff from DRS that named it Victorious. The rest is history. Where to start with this incredible loco? The entire loco is lavished in beautiful detail. Starting with the roof, you have a beautiful red fan tucked behind a wire mesh. Moving along the roof, you have a blanking plate for what was once the steam heating boiler. And in this particular example, the fan does not operate. Moving down to the bogies and the fuel tank. The bogies are beautifully decorated from the red springs, yellow wheel bearing end caps with legible wording to the chain that would be connected to the handbrake. You also have sand pipes heading down to the wheels as well. The fuel tank only has one fuel gauge per side as the other one has been blanked off. Moving up from the bogies, you have the beautiful five bar checker tread plate. These are situated at every door going into the cabs. Talking about interiors and the cab, the cab is beautifully detailed from the back wall with all the signs to the handbrake wheel, to the seats and to the, even the levers as well. And in this particular loco, the dials illuminate. Talking about lights, we also have cab lights and we also have engine room lights as well. And if you're wondering why there are extra numbers along the side of the loco, these are the previous numbers that the loco has been given throughout its life. First starting with D6966 and then when TOPS numbering system come in that moved to 37266. And the art form on the side of the loco is a Cockney Sparrow as it was based at Stratford. Obviously a little brief history and obviously the detail it's, it is nice, it really is nice. Um, regarding to get into the decoder. Um, obviously typical Acura scale fashion, the lid comes off, there you go, so obviously you've got holes in the top there, this is just held on by magnets, so here you go, there you go, there's a the decoder, and obviously there's the speaker, and obviously you have the clips in there as well, and what loco would be without a loco weigh-in, there we go, so Obviously, oh, set to zero, there you go. There we are, loco on there, and it weighs in at a mighty 688 grams. Also, you have etched nameplates as well, victorious, so there you go, I haven't stuck those on. Um, I probably will do as I come to run it more regularly. I always find that eventually they just fall off into oblivion and never to be found again. And also, you have little bits as well. So these are the snow plows. Um, and I think you obviously, you have the pipe work as well in that bag. So obviously you don't want to hear me waffle on. You want to, you want to hear it. So here we go.
<laughs> it's just so, oh God, it sounds so bloody good it really does so that that ladies and gentlemen was a cold start so on your controller you push number eight so you engage number eight and then obviously you push number one to start the engine so that engages the the cold start um on a normal start you actually hear a little pop as a sort of a slight misfire as sort of like unburnt fuel goes into the engine and oh, it just <laughs> it sounds so good it really does um regarding where i got this from so i got this from rouser sheffield and i got it at the conventional price of i can't remember what, what 259.99 or something like that so yeah so that is where i got it from um and for the people that don't have sound obviously you know it's obviously down to you but honestly you miss out so much especially with the extra detail and things like that obviously cab lights i think you can still get the cab lights but there's just so much more playability if you want to call it that with the locos of having the sound or even having the chip as well because it is just, oh, it's just it's just so good it really is obviously you don't want to hear me waffling on you want to see it pulling a freight train so sit back and relax and here we go
There you go. <laughs> it sounds bloody brilliant, don't it? It sounds so rich. I can't, like, I mean, I love the Backman models. I really, really do. But the sound of this is just next level. It Honestly, it sounds incredible. It really, really does. It sounds so rich. It sounds just bloody brilliant. It really, really does. Um, Loco runs around absolutely perfectly. It has been run in. Um, I think we've done, what, half hour each way or something like that runs absolutely beautiful it really does the color of the loco and everything and like i say i was debating on to cancel the order or canceling the order um but you know what i'm so glad i didn't because it just looks absolutely stunning not because i didn't want the loco i did want the loco but like i say i wanted it to fit in and it fits in absolutely perfectly honestly um i don't know if there is any left um, like I say, I brought this through Rails of Sheffield, so thank you to uh, to them. Um, I know there is a few locos left of Batch 2 uh, via the Acura Scale website, because it does actually come up of how many is left. Um, would I consider getting one? Obviously, I've already got one. So, um, But yeah, honestly, they are absolutely stunning. They really, really are. Um, talking about sound... Um, my brother has very recently, I actually put a link, uh, hopefully at the end of this video, he's brought uh, Locomotion, uh, 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 there we go, Locomotion Models, uh, British Railways English Electric Type 3 D76700, and there it is, and he brought that non-sound because I think that was the only version that they were doing, which I don't know why. Um, so unfortunately, or I say unfortunately, so he's actually done a video on actually putting sound into it. So the Acura Scale Thrash speaker, obviously the sound decoder as well, and obviously the little clips that hold the speaker in place as well. So yeah, so I'll try and get that link in the end of it. And um, and yeah, and that sounds amazing as well. And it looks stunning as well in the in the the BR green as well. So Loco, yeah, absolutely brilliant. It really, really is incredible. And we're obviously with the auto balusters as well. So if you've enjoyed the video, please consider giving it a like and a subscribe. And obviously, if you want to leave a comment, please feel free because I'll I'll get back to you. And there will be some amazing more unboxings. Trust me on that. Um, as and when the pre-orders come out. So a massive thank you to my brother for obviously allowing me to run my trains around. The container train is his. We've moved some containers around to make it look a little bit different. And obviously the uh, Backman Class 66 as well, that is his as well. So a massive thank you for allowing me to run my train around and obviously using his, his uh, auto balusters as well. So thank you so much for watching. And until next time, see you later.